Hey, what is up everyone? It's your boy Bucky here. How are you guys doing? As always, hope you guys are doing well. It's been a long time since I've created a video here on YouTube, but I do plan on making more content both here on YouTube and streaming on Twitch in the future, so please stay tuned for that. Uh, but I figured I'd kind of get back into it with today's video, which is five things I think Bungie can do to make trials better. To not waste any time, I'm going to go ahead and list off the five things and then I'll get into more information later in the video. So what are they? One, change matchmaking. You can certainly get much more healthier player pools uh, with a couple different fixes. Number two, help for solo players. You'll see my idea in a second. It's not just, oh, give us permanent freelance. No, there's an actual idea uh, that I have for that. Number three, Trials Lab fixes. Bungie is insistent on giving us Trials Labs, and I think there's a couple things they can do to make that much, much better and a much better experience. Number four, new maps and modes. Seems pretty no-brainer, but Bungie's kind of dropped the ball on that. Uh, and number five, PvP focus tunings. You'll see in the background gameplay, I'm using an Adept Plug 1 that I just got from this week's Nightfalls. Uh, while it was fun to use, it definitely felt toxic, and I'm not really proud of having used it, and I really hope Bungie nerfs fusions a bit more in the future. Uh, but you'll see what I mean by that later in the video. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Number one, change matchmaking. Card-based matchmaking, first and foremost, should be the rule moving forward, followed by connection-based matchmaking. I'm totally okay with having slightly longer wait times between matches if it means I'll end up with a more meaningful match. There's no point in rushing you into the next game mode and then you end up going against a three stack uh, or you know you go against people who are lagging because they're on different consoles or something like that, then the time you saved by having a faster matchmaking time, you've completely wasted and then some by having a non-meaningful, completely unbalanced match. Bungie should, and I believe absolutely needs, to remove Flawless Pool because it ends up splitting the player base and ends up having a negative effect on how Trials is played and who people play Trials with. So looking at Friday and Saturdays, you have a pretty good range of players and Trials. Sometimes you run against Sweats, but usually you run against a good group of players and you have competitive matches. However, on Sunday and Monday, and before Tuesday's reset, for those of you that don't have day jobs like yours surely, you are negatively affected for having gone flawless. So you only match up against others that have gone flawless, and most of the time they're very good players and three stacks of clients. Also, people who are not flawless don't want to play with you because they don't want to be in the flawless pool. So I can't even play with my clan mates because I don't want to put them through that experience and they don't want to go through it. And honestly, they probably do it just to have fun and play all together, but why make them suffer needlessly, right? On top of that, I've never felt like playing on Sunday and Monday after having gone flawless. On the other hand, I almost feel incentivized to wait until Sunday to play because I'll go against much easier players or other groups that waited for Sunday for the same exact reason. Additionally, you unfortunately have players that are very good, but they refuse to go flawless until Monday night so they can only stay in the non-flawless pool and they just end up farming the kids that just aren't as good as them because they haven't gone flawless yet. Not everyone or every group is like Grenade or Jake who does carries in the flawless pool on Sundays and Mondays because they're actually good enough to play in that pool. So you end up with people who are card resetters that farm in the non-flawless pool which hurts others from going flawless. Yes, sure, maybe they're doing carries so they get one person to the lighthouse for the first time but on the other side of that are three people that lose the chance to go flawless and they have to reset. And guess what? they'll probably match up against them because the other guys are resetting their cards as well. So they're just not good enough to play in the, in the flawless pool or they just don't want to play in there and have a harder time. If you were good enough, you'd do it. That's really the argument. But again, there's so much incentive to not play in the flawless pool that you're just going to have a really horrible time. Number two, this one might be a bit controversial. Well, I think all of these options are pretty controversial. Uh, but instead of a permanent freelance mode, they should have a built-in Sherpa mode like guided games for solo players. 
There are a lot of solo players in D2, many of which don't have other people to play the game with, specifically in regard to Trials. While LFGs are a thing, it can still be hard for solo players to find a team and stick with them until they go flawless and beyond. Many LFGs look for specific KDs, gilded titles, or other criteria that many don't meet. While Freelance splits up the pool and you end up with three stack sweats and a guided games allows clans of teams of two to be able to find a solo player that they can play and help along the way. Is this a perfect solution? No. And I don't think you'll really find a solution that everyone is happy with. You're always going to have certain people dislike any given solution. However, I personally believe this is a great option because you don't split up the player base between normal and freelance, while also allowing teams of two to find a third or a solo that they can help. And you still have LFG sites as well for a healthier and larger player pool at the end of the day. Number three, fix the broken capture zones Trials Labs game mode. If Bungie is insistent on including this weird game mode that does not seem to be well liked, at least from what I've seen on Twitter and Reddit, maybe not the best sources of site here, they can at least bring some sort of consistency to it rather than the what feels like lazy implementation that it currently has. To be more specific, instead of having completely random zones per match, have them follow a cycle like outside, inside, mid. This way you don't have a game where the zones are inside four times in a row and then randomly swaps to the other side of the map and then the following match, it's never inside at all because that just feels completely broken and I'm not sure what sort of meaningful data you're going to be able to pull from that anyway. This brings consistency to the game mode which is much needed in any PvP mode, yet alone Trials. Number 4, New Maps. Yes, this is something that Bungie has already discussed, but to be frank, they seem to be completely tone deaf on this and are again showing that while they have some things in store for Crucible, it's just too little too late. They need to really ramp things up, not one new and one reprise map over the next three seasons. Again, that just feels lazy and very lackluster, which is probably why PvP in Destiny is in the state that it's in, and has never really been a serious PvP mode when compared to other games. <coughs> Halo. Lastly, this last one is more PvP focused, but really comes across much more in Trials and is to have a dedicated PvP weapon and ability tuning. This is a huge one for me because it seems like there are certain weapons and abilities and exotics that go beyond the meta into broken territory, and it takes Bungie quite a while to even acknowledge it at the very least. Don't get me wrong, this isn't an easy thing for Bungie to do. Actually, this is certainly one of the more difficult things for any development team to do, but also has the biggest reward for the player base. As an example, at the time of recording this, the Hunter's Exotic Gauntlet's Renewal Grasps and the Titan Helmet Laurelly Splendor are extremely broken in Crucible and become a spam in Trials. I've come across Teams of 3 using these exotics, and while, yes, Teams of 3 of anything are going to be annoying, I can generally beat them with my team, but not when people are using these exotics, at least not when it's used by experienced players. Bungie has always had a very tough time balancing weapons between PvE and PvP, but it's something that they really need to work on if they want to achieve a much better experience for their players. Other examples include the Rent, which still has super high aim assist even after the first nerf. Fusions in general, like what you're seeing in the background gameplay with my new Plug 1, I mean you're seeing me beam kids in certain situations where I really shouldn't be able to get those kills. And lastly, Le Monarchs. Hell, I've even seen bow mains complain against Le Monarch, which is how you know it's annoying and broken. I would like to note, while I personally never use Le Monarch, and I've never used it in PvP because I think it is the cheesiest weapon in the game, I just started using fusions over the last couple of weeks to see how viable they are in medium to long range, and even just a crutch on it, and I can say after using it for these two weeks, it is one of the most broken aspects of PvP I've ever seen. I think Bungie personally doesn't want to nerf fusions too much because it's the special weapon they made for Destiny that you don't really see in other games, but it's something that they need to do to achieve a much healthier game mode. With all of these said, I think there are quote unquote easy nerfs that bring these weapons into line with other weapons while still being viable. The 50% firmly planted nerf to fusions is one example, and while more needs to be done, it did make a slight difference in PvP. Same with the chaperone nerf we had last season. 
While there will and should be evolving and ever-changing metas in the game, it becomes broken when there are a couple of exotics and a whole subclass of weapons that are always at the top, and this is something Bungie really needs to fix and get a hold of. But with all of that said, these are just my thoughts. I've been playing Destiny since the D1 beta and have absolutely loved the journey this game has gone on and taken all of us with. Destiny 1 Year 3 was one of my favorite PvE games even if PvP was still trash. And while Destiny 2 started out really, really bad, Witch Queen has brought Destiny 2 into an amazing state where it's fun to play. Again, PvP is still not good, but it's gotten better and it has a very, very long road ahead of it until it can call itself a well playable PvP game. Unfortunately, I just don't know if Bungie can pull it off because their PvP track record in Destiny is not good. They have so many avenues of feedback and I just don't see them doing what needs to be done. I see them do other things and make weird decisions and try and base it on some sort of statistics that they're receiving, but the end feel is just not good. While their heart may be in the right place, I've yet to see them actually execute on their plans properly. And as a side note, that's just not a PvP problem. While the rest of the game is absolutely amazing, there are bugs left and right, sometimes even game breaking, which is sad to see. However, I do want to make it clear that I truly do love Bungie as a development team and really want to see them succeed in all aspects of Destiny, and I can't wait to see what they have in store for us in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'm really curious about your thoughts on these. Like I mentioned earlier, many if not all of these five ideas are going to be controversial and not everyone is going to like any given solution. So I'd love to hear from you. What would you like to see Bungie do to fix Trials moving forward? Do you even think Trials needs fixing? I look forward to reading all of your comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Until then, take it easy and stay safe everyone. Peace.